This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Hey, it's Christmas Eve, assuming you're watching this video when it came out, which means tonight, Santa Claus and his flying reindeer are gonna be making their way around the world. By the way, growing up, I always saw reindeer and I thought, you know, they were the same as deer and deer are a certain size and not that big. And then I saw one in real life and those things are friggin' huge. If Santa Claus can control those things, that dude's a boss. Now, Santa's been around for a long time. Back in the day, people got around with, you know, sleighs being pulled by horses and whatnot. So, you know, having reindeer, which are gigantic animals with glowing noses, at least one of them anyway, uh, made a lot more sense back then. But it's 2018, almost 2019. Don't you think today he would have some kind of more, you know, advanced form of transportation? I feel pretty sure Santa's flying in an autonomous car now. All this is to say, tis the season for flying transportation, so I thought today might be a good time to talk about flying cars. Flying cars have actually been in the news a little bit lately. Just last week, an engineer named Sanjay Dahl had a little accident in a flying car that he himself had designed. The car he built is called the WD-1, and he was kind of testing it out around Detroit, Michigan, when a stiff breeze <laughs> took over, and he went airborne. He didn't mean to go airborne, but he went airborne. By the way, he named his car the WD-1, clearly the first version of this car. What happens when he gets to 40? It's a thinker. I don't really mean to make light of this. I think he was injured and was put in the hospital, but he has been stabilized. He's okay. He's gonna be all right. But uh, this just kind of shows the inherent dangers of flying cars. In fact, this is one of the reasons why Elon himself is uh, said many times that he's not really interested in flying cars. That's why he kind of wants to go underground with the boring company that's also been in the news lately. Which I get, but I mean, come on, man. Flying cars. Flying cars has been near the top of our list of future gotta haves for as long as we can think back. The ancient Egyptians looked at flying devices. Leonardo da Vinci wanted to do some kind of flying machine. Of course, today we have planes and they work really well. It's easily the safest form of transportation available. But the idea of having your own personal flying machine. You can just get in it and go where you want. Still sounds pretty good. Everything in pop culture from the Jetsons to Blade Runner 2049, anytime we envision a future, we tend to throw a flying car in there. That's just symbolic of where we think we should go as a species. But much like fusion technology, it's always been just a little out of our grasp. But some really interesting things have been happening on this front lately. I mean, you might have noticed drones are kind of everywhere now. It's actually kind of shocking how fast drone technology has kind of taken over. It was not that long ago that it was such really high-end wow toy, you know? It's like, wow, you can actually fly a little drone with a camera on it. Uh, that was a, a huge deal just 10 years ago. Now they're everywhere and the, the pace of the technology, the stability of these craft are getting better and better. The size of these craft are getting bigger and bigger to the point that it's not that unheard of, it's not that impossible to imagine that a human being could maybe fly around in one of these things. And obviously improvements in computer technology and computer stabilization, autonomous technology is just added to this. So because of all that, there's a lot of innovative companies out there that are funded by some big money people that are trying to make this possible future a reality. And the first one that we're gonna talk about here is called the PAL V Liberty. Technically a gyrocopter, it's being advertised as the first flying car to actually make it to market. The production version actually debuted at the Geneva Motor Show in March of this year. Certification has taken a little bit longer than the makers wanted, but if all things go well, they could be shipping these out in just a few months. It's worth noting that the Liberty isn't quite everything people ask for in a flying car. It doesn't have vertical takeoff and landing capability. It kind of needs to have a bit of a runway and you do need a pilot's license to fly it. It does come with a bit of a steep price tag though, and and the price tag includes the cost of flying lessons. They gotta actually teach you how to fly this thing, even if you already have a pilot's license. Basically, if you can't afford to take a week-long vacation in Europe at the drop of a hat, you're probably not gonna be buying one of these. The Liberty also doesn't fully convert from driving to flying uh, automatically. You have to manually do it yourself. And it's a manual process that takes five or 10 minutes, so. It's not quite something James Bond would be flying around in. I did run some numbers on the fuel economy. The tank holds 100 liters, about 26 liquid gallons, uh, but there's no need for special gas. 95 octane will do just fine. Uh, you can get 37 miles of the gallon driving and a range of 310 miles in the air. All this is impressive and the car is really cool, but um, it's very expensive and it's something that you would not just be able to fit into your lifestyle. You kind of have to craft your lifestyle around this thing. For those with more reasonable pocketbooks, there's something that's been put together by Larry Page of Google, 
who has very deep pocketbooks. It's called the Kitty Hawk. Actually, the company is called Kitty Hawk. The name of the vehicle is called the Kitty Hawk Flyer. Kitty Hawk hasn't released prices for the Flyer just yet, but speculation is that it could actually be between five and $10,000. And maybe that's because it's not really a flying car so much as a flying jet ski. Because it actually has pontoons instead of wheels. It's actually designed to fly over water and land in water. It's basically a drone you can ride. It has 10 exposed rotors, so you don't want to stick your hands too far outside of the cabin there, but uh, it runs on battery power. It's a fully electric vehicle. So far it's been demoed flying between two and 10 feet above the water and it flies at around 20 miles an hour. But this is really more of a toy, more of a fun thing. You don't need a pilot's license to fly it because it's actually guided by computer, which is really impressive. It even manages to stay stable in high winds. In fact, apparently the controls in the vehicle kind of emulate a, a gaming console. Yeah, it's really more of a proof of concept, just a big toy, just kind of get people used to the idea. And once people do get comfortable with the idea of flying around on drones, he's gonna hit them with his next vehicle called the Core. Like the flyer, the Cora is fully electric, but it can carry 400 pounds of people or supplies and it can travel at over 100 miles an hour. It's an autonomous flyer and can only travel for about 20 minutes before it needs to recharge, so you're not going to be flying it across the country or anything, but to hop across town, it's a possibility. Uh, they're testing it right now in New Zealand and we'll hopefully be bringing it to the market in the next few years. Now the PAL-V and the Kitty Hawk both are more like the drones that we see flying around with the rotors, but there's another type that's out there, the fixed wing aircraft and there's some options on that as well. One of them is called the Terrafugia Transition, which may actually come to market just after PAL-V. The Transition has foldable wings that just kind of spread out when it's time to fly away, and it can do so in less than a minute. So like the Liberty, you do need a pilot's license to fly this thing, and also like the Liberty, you need a big bank account. It's gonna start at $400,000. Now, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at flying cars. You know, you, you have the idea of them just being able to vertically take off and land, just like point to point wherever you want to go. And then there's the kind that you have to sort of drive to an airport and take off on a runway. Kitty Hawk would be the former and the Liberty in the transition would be the latter. But I think really what most people think of when they think of a flying car is not necessarily like driving your car to the airport and taking off. They think about just leaving their driveway and going up into the sky. That's called VTOL, Vertical Takeoff and Landing. There is a company that's working on a VTOL vehicle that uh, you'll recognize their name from your favorite uh, movie where a kid with a crazy professor friend goes to the future and then back from it. DeLorean! Yes, DeLorean is working on a flying car. Very appropriate. I'm not sure if the design is meant for road travel, but 80s kids should appreciate the, the Knight Rider LED lights across the front. Other companies have various designs in the VTOL category uh, in the works, but perhaps the company that's getting closest to it right now is an Israeli company called Urban Aeronautics. The company founder, Dr. Rafi Yoli, uh, actually had a, a military experience in Israel flying fighter jets and flying drones. Their concept vehicle, the X-Hawk, uses two ducted fans, meaning they're enclosed so you can't actually get into them, uh, to power the craft around and of course is controlled by computer stabilization. There's a smaller variant called the City Hawk that can be used in urban rescue situations as well as personal taxis. And they've had a pretty successful run as of August of this year. They've had 250 successful flights, so. They're coming along pretty well. Right now, we don't know whether they're gonna make this uh, available to the public. They may only be sold through other companies and uh, government contracts, but they plan on having them in the air by 2021. Now, whenever I talk about predictions for the future, I always am struck by how it's really more of a reflection of the time period that, that prediction is made in. So it doesn't surprise me that a lot of these designs are meant to be very fuel efficient or run on electric. In fact, the reason why Kitty Hawk is testing in New Zealand is because they've had a really strong commitment to clean energy. And the City Hawks I just talked about from Urban Aeronautics are planning on working on hydrogen technology. So like flying cars, it's a mixed bag. I can understand why people might be against them. Um, you, you know, you're basically trusting a computer to fly these things around. Uh, if they fall, it could land on somebody, not only hurt the person in the vehicle, but hurt somebody on the ground ground and they're kind of loud. I mean, if you have a big drone, those things make a lot of noise. So whether or not these will ever actually be accepted, whether they'll actually, you know, take off, pun intended, uh, is, is up in the air. Again, pun intended. Can't stop with the puns. But I find this stuff exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of developments are out there, what kind of products actually hit the market. And uh, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll be excited to get in one someday. But another reason to get excited about this technology or really any technology that's in a burgeoning phase is that you never know where it's gonna go. You never know what developments could come out of it that could change your life in other ways that you're not expecting. 
To that end, one of the most exciting pieces of news that's come across my computer lately has been one about the MIT students that created an ion engine flying machine. I've talked about ion drives before. Uh, the whole point of them in space is that they have a very small amount of propulsive force, but they do it for long periods of time, and ultimately that builds up to some actual speed. It's not the kind of force that could, you know, put a rocket into space or anything like that, and I never would have imagined that any kind of airplane could fly with an ion engine. But some students at MIT figured out how to do it. You can check out my video on ion drives if you want to really get a deep dive on how these things work, but the short version of it is that they fire charged particles out the back end for a tiny, tiny amount of thrust that, again, builds up over time. And this plane works the same way. It basically has an electrode across the front of the wing and one across the back of the wing, and they put 20,000 volts in each one of these, and by doing so, in the way that they've designed it to do, it causes an ion flow across that wing causing it to fly. So it's kind of a plane that creates its own wind, but it does so with no moving parts whatsoever. And with no moving parts, they were able to fly this device for 230 feet at 11 miles an hour. And if that does not sound impressive to you, keep in mind that is twice as far as the first flight by the Wright brothers. So look, this is exciting stuff. All the stuff that we see in sci-fi of, you know, flying cars and flying machines, vehicles going around, they don't usually have rotors, they don't usually have you know, uh, the kind of propeller devices that we would imagine would need to be used. They don't usually have jet engines or anything like that. They're just kind of like, you know what I'm talking about. This is that kind of technology. Now that might be a far cry from what we've seen in the movies, but still it is a first step and uh, it's pretty exciting. We might be just buzzing around in some TIE fighters soon. And just for fun, I want to point out a, a really cool looking uh, flying vehicle called the iTech Maverick. It's basically like an old school hot rod that flies with the use of a parachute and a rotor and uh, it just looks like a lot of fun. So if you're gonna skim over the tops of houses and give sunbathers the thrill of a lifetime, you might as well do it in style. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Would you ever get inside of a flying drone? Would you ever be a part of this? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Are there any designs out there that I didn't cover? Actually, I know there are. If there's some that, you're, that are your favorite, please do talk about it in the comments below. The kind of innovations necessary to get us to that world where we're buzzing around in personal flying aircraft are really impressive, very difficult, it's gonna require a great understanding of how these things work. And for that, a good place to start, if you're curious, is Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a learning platform with a twist. It doesn't just feed you information and ask you to memorize it. It actually teaches you how to think like a scientist and problem solve. That way you figure out these things on your own in a way that makes sense to you, and you can apply those understandings to other parts of your life. And even though flying cars are not an everyday thing, yet someday they might be, and if they were, you might be able to learn about it in the brilliant course, The Physics of the Everyday. It kind of teaches you how the stuff all around you works and gives you this better understanding and better appreciation for what has to be done to make our lives the way they are now. You can sign up for a free account at brilliant.org and get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles and those who sign up for their premium account that gives you access to all of their courses can get 20% off if you go to brilliant.org slash anxious with Joe. Also, if you're scrambling for a last minute gift, it makes a great gift for anybody that has any level of curiosity in their lives whatsoever. So get to it, get learning, get brilliant. Go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. I want to thank brilliant.org for sponsoring this channel. Not just this video, but all year. They've been awesome. I really enjoy working with them. I also really enjoy my Patreon subscribers who uh, contribute from, on Patreon. I call them my answer files. I got some new people that have joined lately. Let me get their names out real quick. We got Wesley Van Pelt, Judy Stovall, who's my mom. That's my, my mom supported me on here. My mom's the best. Adam Brown, Lisa Yawn, uh, Leslie Meadows, Mustafin Reslan, James Spencer Weber, Jonathan Haloub, Aaron Herbst, Stephen Hamilton, Steve Rhodes, Travis Brent, Lewis, Pavel Kimlov, I'm killing it, Alice, Mark Byers, uh, Keith Spicer, Kevin R. Terrell, Robert Riddlestone, and Fernando Avalos. Thank you guys so much, especially my mom. If you would like to join them, including my mom, and get early access to uh, my videos and by get behind the scenes stuff and just access to me, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, check out this video. Google thinks you might like that too. Check out the other videos if you are so inclined and maybe subscribe because I come back with videos just like this on futurism and science topics every Monday and every Thursday. All right, with that, thank you guys for watching. If you celebrate Christmas, have a wonderful Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I wish the best for all of you. Now go out there, have an eye-opening holiday week, and I'll see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.